When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's amore. When the world seems to shine like you had too much wine, that's amore. When you walk through a dream, but you know you're not dreaming, signore. Scusa me, but you see back in old Napoli, that's amore. That's amore. That's amore. Hey, folks. Uh, Happy New Year. I got a great, great guest today. Uh, he did me a huge favor by coming on. And uh, I didn't even want to do anything up front. I just want to bring him in. And uh, I'm very excited to have him on the show. So please welcome my good friend, Louis Anderson. Louis, you're sideways. <laughs> you're, you're sideways. I don't there, know you there we go. There we go. All right. Hey. I thought you fell off the Rocky. chair or something like that. You all right? <laughs> I'm good, Rocky. My first podcast of 2021. Yeah, me too, buddy. Me too. All right. How you doing, Louis? I'm good. I'm just, I uh, had a really nice evening last night. Watched a little TV and uh, watched a minute or two of uh, the ball drop. But then I was, then I had that, you know, that ball drop. Did you watch it at all? No, I was working in Cleveland. Uh, they had the, the big advertisement for Nissan or something like that. That was the, that was it with the, with the, you know, when the ball dropped and then on the yeah. build, build where it was a Nissan. Which I get the, you know, I get about that, but it kind of like turned me off. Yeah, yeah. And I like Nissans. Yeah, but you know, uh, I've been binge watching. I was so bored the other day. I was watching pole vaulting. I'm like, what the hell? Like, what's this coming <laughs> down? And I'm like, who the hell invented that? You know what I'm saying? Like, there'd be like two guys hanging around, like there was no cartoons on that day or something like that. You know, like I never got I, the uh, point. I oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I never got the point to pole vaulting. You know what I mean? Like uh, the guy goes, well, how do you know when you win? And it's like, well, you know, until the pole breaks or one of us gets hurt, you know, I never yeah, understood it. You know, uh, I used to have a joke uh, where I was in the Fat Olympics and I said the pole vault, I drove that sucker right into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Carson laughed at that joke. So that oh, was that's a of- great joke. Was that your first appearance, Lou? No, it was about my third or fourth appearance. And uh, I said, a broad jump, I uh, drove that sucker into the ground. <laughs> I straight, I did a good thing at the Olympics. I straightened out those uneven parallel bars. Oh, yeah. I and remember then, uh, that. And then I said, broad jump, killed her, which you really can't do that joke anymore, and you shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, that's, that's her. That was a... I guess 30, God, how many is that? 30 some years ago. Man. 1984. Yeah. She's wow. Louise, huh? 36 years ago, I guess. I don't know. That's I'm right. terrible at math. So somebody else probably will go, that's not right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Where are funny. you, Rocky? I'm in Chicago, Louis. I'm home in Chicago, okay. you know. You're home? Yes, sir. Sleet storm, you know, normal. Typical Chicago winter. I like Chicago, you know. I, I love Chicago. Yeah, it's a good city. Steph and the improv, they love you here too, Lou. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know uh, when I was up in Minnesota, our first gig out of town was with Ted Holm. Oh. Remember Ted? Yeah, yeah. And it was uh, Holm and Fiala. Ed Fiala. Ed Fiala. He, he might have passed. I'm uh, God rest his soul. And we worked at, um, I see, what was the name of that club? Was it the Comedy Cottage? No. Oh, yeah. One of those. Um, oh, what was the name of Ted's club? Do you remember by any chance? You're too young. Uh, but anyway, something about laughs. But, uh, and we stayed and we slept in somebody's basement. <laughs> it was me and Scott Hansen and Jeff Gerbino. Oh wow! And Alex Cole, I think that was the good we did. We were the Minneapolis Comedy All Stars. I'm not sure of everybody, but I think that was the group, and wow. it was a good experience. 
Yeah. You know, to do that and then to drive down. I think we got, I think whoever drove got a ticket. I think maybe Jeff got a ticket. So all the money he made and we made, I think, went to that ticket. I'm not sure, sure, but Uh, there wasn't any, you know, back then we were just so thrilled. And then my second time out, I was, I went to Kansas City with David Nastor at, uh, uh, what is it? What was that called over there in Westport? Stanford, Stanford, Stanford Sun. Yeah. yeah. So, Chicago uh, was a great experience and always has been. And of course, Steph over at uh, and Tony over at uh, Schomburg yeah. Improv. Zany is nice to me always. The good people. You know, it's yeah. nice, you know. I really, I mean, Chicago. I get some really great friends from Chicago. It's really a, it's a great city. Really yeah. lovely, lovely, lovely city. You know, it's so funny, Louis. Uh, last time I saw you, we were in Minneapolis together. I was working at the Mall of America. Do you oh, remember yeah. this? Yeah. And your buddy, Tom Bernard. Yeah. Well, we went, you took me to his restaurant to eat. And this guy, a friend of yours, I think dropped us off in a cab. And he had to come back and get us because I had a show that night. I had to get back and do the show. Mm-hmm. Well, now it's running late. And uh, me and you are standing out there in the street. And this couple comes out from Montana. Right. They, do, we? do you remember that? They go, we're big fans. They go, we love you. And we go, we, we read your books. We, And then you look at them and you go, can you give us a ride? <laughs> like, uh, do you remember that? Yeah. And they gave me, they they took me back to my hotel, waited for me to change, and then you said, "Hey, you should go see Rocky's show." And then these people took me to my show. Do you remember that? Did they come to the show, Rocky? They I came to the it. show. They took yeah. me to the hotel and then took You're me to right. the show. La Grassa, you know the the Italian place, or was it yeah. the the Mexican place? It was uh, the steakhouse. It was uh, Tom yeah. Bernard. I think he had a, a. Yeah, I think it was La Grassa. Oh, is that the name of the place? Where, uh, where uh, you know, where uh, the, what's the comedy place? The Acme. It's on that area. Acme. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Down right. on First. Anyways, a great restaurant. Great Italian food there. It it sure was. Yeah, but that's yeah. what I remember. These people, they they loved you. And then we're sitting in the car and they're flashing all these pictures because they're from this little town in Montana, 600 people, and they couldn't wait to get home and tell everybody they met Louie Anderson. Well, that's so sweet. You know, always try to give people a story, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, because it matters, you know. I still have people bringing up stuff. I still get jobs from being nice to people in my life, you know? Like I'd be nice to the assistant and then they would get the job and they go, I hired you for this gig because you were nice to me way back when and no one else was. And I go, oh, well, thank my mom. She was nice. She taught me how to be nice. Yeah. You know, I got, uh, I was supposed to do um, Jimmy Fallon's show. The kid that was booking it at the time, he said when he first came out here and he was just, you know, answering the phones and all that at this agency, mm-hmm. he goes, Rocky was the only guy that was nice to me. He goes, everybody else kind of treated me like a shithead. And that's mm-hmm. how I ended up getting that from just being nice to people. Were you born in Chicago, Rocky? Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. born here. So, in know, and, and me and St. Paul, uh, Midwesterners, you know, they're real people. Yeah. Yeah, I still to this day ask how the assistant's doing at my agency. Oh, I mean, nice. You know, because I know they do a lot of work and I know that they're people. Who are you with, Lou? Who are you with? I'm with Brillstein Partners, Bernie oh. Brillstein's company. Oh, nice. Uh, old company. And uh, I'm with ICM. Oh, okay. I'm trying to fire my agent, but he won't take my calls. <laughs> Is that one of your jokes? That's a really good job. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Lou, I don't know if you remember this. Well, you, I know you remember it, but I don't, you probably don't remember this part. I think uh, when you had your show, the Louis show, and was that like 96? Yeah. You, you had your sitcom? Well, I came in to read for your best friend. I came in to read for this casting agent. And um, I think the part, the guy was a cop, if I remember right. Yeah. Was that right? Your best friend was a cop? Yeah. And uh, I guess it was, was it based in Duluth, Minnesota? Yes. 
Well, I remember reading the script and it said, it said Duluth and I'm reading it me like an idiot. And I said, uh, I go Duluth. And uh, he's like, all right, thanks for coming in. You know, oh. like, <laughs> you know who got even... the part, right? No, I didn't get the part because I couldn't even no, pro- you know pronounce. you did get the part, though? Brian Cranston, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I didn't lose out to somebody. Yeah, I lost out to a champ. That's good, though, you know? Well, you know, I think that he it was so much different than me. And with you, you were actually a good choice because we have a similar speech and delivery and you know we're easy going and yeah but uh you know i think people know when you walk in the room if you're gonna get it or not and then they just are courteous and let you read yeah i never got any jobs reading apart hardly ever yeah right yeah i got jobs rocky i got all my jobs from friends or people who knew who i was uh, i didn't have to audition i just they go we want you to play this part i go good I'm not, yeah. I don't want to audition. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. when I said Duluth, I didn't sound like I was Duluth. from Minnesota. <laughs> so they, they just said, thanks for coming in. They cut me off right there. What was, uh, what was your first uh, gig, Rocky? Where, where were you? Uh, you know what? It was a little play. It was at the Comedy Cottage. In, yeah. Uh, out there by I O'Hare. used to love that Comedy Cottage. Yeah. That was a killer little room. Small, that tight. Yeah, that was a killer room, the Comedy Cottage. Yeah, yeah. You remember your first joke? Uh, man. No, not that I think of. No, I can't think of it right now. Do you? You remember yours, Lou? Yeah, I can't stay long. I'm in between meals. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> you know, I used to always, uh, I'm a kind of a person who is a historian on himself. You know, I got all oh. the first stuff. So, you know, I'm very lucky. Wow. You know, that, uh, you know, I've been very fortunate that way. And I just do it because it makes me happy. I'm a hoard. I'm partly a hoarder, you know, as a Minnesotan. You don't want to throw oh. anything out. You might need it to make a table level. Yeah. Or to dig your car out of the snow. Yeah, it's true. Right. used to use our license when they came out with plastic licenses. Yeah, to scrape the windows. Yeah, yeah, us too. Yeah. But, you know, uh, I love that. I grew up in the Midwest. I don't like cold and snow anymore. Mm-hmm. I like people. I like the people of the Midwest, but I don't like the weather. I li- I've been out here. I've been out in California since 1981. And then I moved uh, 12 or 13 years ago here to Vegas because I had a show uh, on the Strip. I had three or four different shows on the Strip. I remember you know, Vegas, that's kind of like the comics Broadway when yeah. you go to, you know, you, uh, you know, actors go to Broadway when they aren't working in TV or film and comics go right to Vegas because Vegas, you know, comic was the, a big thing. It was a big thing. Yeah. I remember my first headlining gig, how big it was for me. I don't, you know, I love that. Yeah. We go right to Vegas and then right to rehab. <laughs> after uh, that. <laughs> you know, I never went to rehab. But I, uh, I should have but maybe a few times, but maybe, you know, they don't really, t- like I'm a food addict, that's my big issue. And they don't really, now they're more conscientious about the food, you know? But, uh, you know, back then they just thought, oh, what do you have a food problem? Quit eating. Well, no, it's not the same, but. Yeah. Yeah, but I know you love to eat also, right? Yeah, yeah. I, now, oh, who, yeah. You know what people always say to me? They have these arguments with me. Do you know Holly Laurent and Greg Hess? You, you, I think they're a little uh, younger than we are, of course. Um, but they were, in the, they were improv people at the improv there. Okay. In, you know, at Catcher, I mean, uh, Second City. And um, they always say, uh, what's the pizza places there in Chicago? Like, Everybody rates the places, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, like Lou Melnati's, uh, Palermo's, yeah. What is it? What was the first There's one? There's a Lou Melnati's and a Palermo's. That's and... the one that Holly loves. Oh, they, okay. Sometimes she flies it in and has it. They have a great podcast called Mega, which is a satire about a mega church. It's oh, wow. Really good. You'd really like it. But I always like the... Um, 
Pizzeria du Uo. Uno. Oh, yeah, yeah. The one downtown with the little pies. Yeah, like Pizzeria that U- Uno. Uno. Uno, you get yeah. You sick as a dog from it. Yeah. You, <laughs> you weren't supposed to eat it. I didn't know you weren't supposed to eat it at all. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't, it didn't come with instructions. Yeah. I love you know, that pizza. You know, it's so funny, Lou, every city I go in and, you know, especially in this politically correct climate that we're in right now, like, and I never got offended no matter where I'm at, like Kansas city or Orlando, everybody comes up to me and they go, Hey, I know where you can get some good pizza or some good Italian food. Like, yeah. I think they just assume, like, if I don't get some ravioli in me, I'm going to, like, have a go into, like, a fit, you know? You but do I never that got routine? A f- do you do that routine? Because that's no. a really good routine. But I never got offended at that. And I go... I know, I but, you, but it's funny. <laughs> it's such a funny thing because people, when they know what you like, I think it's a way of people bonding with you. Yeah. You know? I, mean, I couldn't go up to one of my Irish buddies and go, hey, I know where you can get a keg real cheap. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think they, you know, they wouldn't look at it the same way. No. But what is your favorite? Are you a big Italian food eater because you're Italian? Or yeah. um, or are you a big every kind of food eater? I like everything, you know, Lou. But uh, a couple of years ago, I, I was having some trouble. I was having some chest pains, you know. And uh, I went to the doctor and he goes, uh, do you eat a lot of bread and pasta? I go, I'm Italian. I was raised on that. Yeah. Well, that ended up, uh, even though my cholesterol was fine, my triglycerides were through the roof. Oh my and I was God. supposed to have a flight that night to Boston. And he goes, you're going to stay here. We're going to look at you tomorrow. So they did, a, you know, this exploratory surgery. And uh, my widow maker artery, it was 99% blocked. Wow. Because I don't know how you didn't have a heart attack. So they put a stent in me. And I've always been pretty healthy, but I, I had to quit eating that food. You know, I really had to yeah. cut back on, you know, carbs and pasta, you know. So uh, how about was, have you have you talked to Steph recently? Yeah, yeah. A few days ago. How about the uh, cocoa bombs she makes? Oh, man. She, she's going to make. No, no, she showed me. She's going to make a million dollars off of those things, Louie. She told me she's sending you some. I love the idea of it. No, nope. I told yep. her, I said, go crazy on it. Yep. Because, you know, um, I just love when some, you know, Steph is just like, she's, she thinks all the time. Mm-hmm. And she goes, well, I'm not having the kind of people in the club. And then she starts out doing these cocoa and then people go crazy for them. And uh, it's fantastic. Her neighbors are buying them off her. They want to buy them off her. I told her that's your next business. I say open that baby right up. Just do all all delivery and takeout. Don't open a business. Yep. Yep. Well, she's got that bar. She can sell them out of the bar. Yeah. But who wants to pay rent? Yeah. Right. You know, nobody wants to pay rent for that. But what a good idea, huh? And I then think she's so. Gotten real art, she's gotten real artistic with it, you know? I think she made over 500 of them already. That's like the neighbors and everybody. They want more and more, you know? Here's what I think is great is that she keeps herself busy and she's such a nice person and a great friend of comics, really loves us comics. Yeah. And uh, has a great sense of humor, a lot of fun. Yeah, um, she- very funny. Loves good lady. Too. She loves good food too. Yeah. Uh, what do you um what do, what are you doing now? Are you working? Are you out? Are there places open? Did you just work at the improv? What's going on? Uh, no, you know what, Lou? They only opened up the improv for two weeks here and then they closed it down. Yeah. But then Wisconsin's open, Ohio, and each state is like different. Yeah. And now I'm actually coming to Vegas. I'm coming to Brad's place uh, this week, coming up for two weeks. Oh, so, how great. Well, I hope we can see each other. I'd love to see you, buddy. Are you, yeah. are you out and about? Or are you staying in? No. What are you doing? But I have, I, I sit outside with people. Oh, okay. You know, because I just have to be careful because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm vulnerable in that whole thing. Oh, yeah, but, me too. Yeah. But yeah, be careful when you come. Brad's will be great. That'll be fine. I think they moved it to a different room, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. I'm just Is worried about the flight, you know, the four hour flight, you know? Well, what airline are you going? Southwest. 
I heard Delta is the safest. Is that right? Because they don't, the middle seats are not there. So, and they do a good job of that. But, you know, I get, I get the whole feeling about what you're going through. You want to know something, Louie? Um, when, when back in Mo February, you know, right before like the pandemic, really, they started shutting things down in March. In yeah. February, I was going to Cleveland on a Southwest flight. And it's only like an hour 10 from Chicago. Yeah. In the middle of the flight, this guy's walking down the aisle and he, he just drops. He just, boom, face first in the aisle and he's knocked out. So the guy next to me is trying to get him up and he has his hand on his back and he tells the flight attendant, he goes, this guy's burning up. Like, how hot is your body that someone can feel that through your shirt? Right. Well, they got this guy up. They sat him back down and then the paramedics got him off the plane. But uh, Southwest, they just put 140 new people on that plane and turned it around. They didn't they didn't yeah. sanitize it. They didn't. And I don't know if what well, the guy I don't had. Know. And I think that Southwest is a good airline because I've flown it a lot. But and it's always convenient, always on time. But I know somebody has flown. Delta several times since the pandemic and they're fine. And, oh. and there's a middle seat open, but I just think okay. if you wear a good, make sure you wear an N95 when okay. you fly. And I got, I would wear some goggles or, or a shield. A welder's you know? mask. Yeah. Yeah. yeah why not? <laughs> um, yeah. yeah Cause you know, know, when you, now you played Cleveland this last week, right? I drove there though. How was it? Was it fun? Yeah, it was nice. You know, you know what I found, Louis? The people that are coming out, they really need it. Like it's doing them yeah. as much good as it is us. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Yeah, it's a good. Uh, you, when's the last time you were up on stage? Well, I had a funny experience happen to me. Um, you know, I wasn't going to do any gigs, and all my gigs have been postponed for the most part. And then uh, I got a call from my agent. And they said, there's a show in Costa Mesa outside of a, a performing arts center. They have a stage that's for, you know, for orchestras and stuff, but it's outside and mm -hmm. everybody will wear a mask and you'll be 25 feet from the people. And you have two shows the day after Thanksgiving. That's kind of one of my wheelhouse where I like to perform during those kind of family holidays. But, um, so I did it. I did a show at four. I drove down. I had someone drive me to all the way to Costa Mesa from Vegas. Huh? Did did two shows, and then turned around after the second show. Got back in the car and drove back home. Got home around midnight, and uh, mm. it was. Uh, I was holding my breath afterwards. Like, was that a good thing to do or not? I think that's what we do in these situations, but. Uh, you know, it turned out good, and I'm glad I did it. It was a well-needed break for me to perform, and I agree with you, Rock. All those people really seem to enjoy it and need it and love it, and you know. And yep. so I'm, I'm uh, hoping to get the vaccine when my time is, whenever I'm uh, eligible, and um, and then I'll start working. I think again because I'm not. I think vaccines are a good idea. I think people that are afraid to get a vaccine. It seems silly to me. I've had lots of flu shots and the, and the um, what is that, shingle shots and uh -huh. all kinds of shots. And uh, I don't have a lot of big reactions to any of that stuff. So, I mean, the alternative is not a good thing. I don't want to get that disease. Yeah, yeah. Or that virus. I don't want that virus. Not I'm going to ask him if I can get a shot to get, be funny. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny automatically, right, Rob? <laughs> You don't really struggle on stage, do you? No, I, I have a pretty good time. Like it's it's yeah. fun, you know. People buy. I mean, in. You are who you are. I am who I am. I think yeah. the people that come to see us are like minded. They enjoy us, and yeah. um, and also, you know, if we if you know, the only time you have a bad show is the second show Friday, and I don't think they're doing them anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Those, those are rough. Yeah. What was the worst yeah. show you ever had, Louis? What, what was like the worst one? The first bad show was in San, in uh, in uh, in at at uh, Kansas City at Westport. Oh. And uh, 
I, the crowds, you know, in Missouri are different, you know, they're a little <laughs> tighter, you know, they're yeah. a little tighter, but, yeah. and I uh, went on and I thought I had bombed a dog's death, but uh, I won them over the rest of the week, but I, you know, nothing worse than how you feel after a show where you think you bombed. I hear you, man. No, no good, no good. But I, you know, I'm, I, I love doing stand up like you do. You know, we come from a time of doing stand up when it was just like uh, we got lucky, you know? Yeah. We got lucky to have an act and to have people like us. And, and how is the podcasting going? I had podcasts go for a while. You're going to have to do my podcast or else we'll just put this up on mine. That would be probably good. I'd love to, Louie. That'd two be fun. Birds with, two birds with one stone, but I could ask you more about that stuff. We do it with mine. Uh, yeah, I'd love to do it. Maybe I could do it when I'm out there with you or whatever you want to do. You yeah. Know? Yeah. You know, I come out, uh, I fly out Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday, and I'll be there for two weeks. And the following Monday and Tuesday, I have off you know, and I'll be out there. So if you want to do it, I'd be happy to, I'd be good to see you again, buddy. Who's on with you? Uh, I think Ken Gar, Ken Gar is there the first week. It's just going to be a two person show. And I'm not sure who's with me the second week. They said Brad might come in for a few days, you know? Hey, do you think, Hey, can I ask you a question? Yeah, absolutely. Do you think there's any need for more than a two person show? Um, because I don't, I mean, I think, If you yeah. have a good opener, yeah. and then, you know, if you do it that way, yeah, whatever way works, I always like less people, more comedy. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because one, if you, you know, if you have three people, one of them could really screw up the energy. Yeah, I've seen MCs ruin a good crowd, right? Like a bad MC ruin yeah. a good crowd. Yeah, you're yeah. right about that. You know, I think most of uh, even, even really bad comedy is good comedy, rock, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it depends. Yeah. And um what we what do you uh so is this your first time? Is this uh is this their first opening since things are going on over at Brad's or have they I, been open? I think they've been open a couple weeks. I was supposed to be there in October and then they moved me. And uh, yeah, so I think they've only been open a few weeks and I think they're capping out at 75 people a show. Mm-hmm. So so Rocky, when you do your show, when you're, you're, you're doing it now, it's evolved. How many years is it for you, Rock? 30? It'll be 32 in February. 32 years. Yeah. Do you, um, do you feel like you're, do you have a set? Like a Vegas set, you must have a Vegas set, right? Yeah, you do some. Because that's a fun life. thing for a comic to have a Vegas yeah. set. Yeah, you got you got ten uh, ten to twenty minutes of opening. That's Vegas. Yep, yep. And everybody's there, so they can identify with it. Right. And um, I, I I love that. I really love Vegas. That's definitely my second home after uh, Minnesota and California is my first home outside of out of uh, outside of uh, Minnesota, but my second home would definitely be Las Vegas because they've treated me so good. I've had so much success here and uh, I look forward to doing doing some more work. Good, buddy. I Weren't you living in Florida for a while, Louie? Weren't you living down there or no? No, I have a little uh, place down there that I go and stay at sometimes in Clearwater. And oh, okay. then... Um, I never really lived there on a regular basis. Oh, I only okay. lived here. I only lived in California. And uh, I love Hawaii. I've spent a lot of time in Hawaii. Yeah. I love Hawaii. Yeah. I like anywhere where the water is, except I love the desert now. I didn't realize I would fall in love with the desert. Thousands of people are moving here to Vegas because of LA and the uh, all the problems and all the expense. Yep. You know, so it's becoming kind of a mini L.A. You know, and- Louie, I was looking for a place out there. I was out there in March at Brad's place when uh, it was St. Paddy's Day weekend when they sent us all home. And I was yeah. looking to move to Vegas, but uh, all this stuff happened. So I just ended up yeah. coming back home because I was burned out on the road. Like I was in like 55 cities last year. Yeah. I, you know what? I'd rather just you know, there's more work in Vegas or I could work Arizona or Southern Cal and yeah, that's I what I was going to do. Idea. 
You yeah. love Vegas. I do. And you can still get a house reasonably or a condo or whatever you're looking for. And it's much, you know, it's just like a, a third of the yeah. cost of LA at the yeah. very most, you know? Yeah, you're right. And the buddy. people are nice, you know, they're nice people here in Vegas that live here. Yeah, yeah. Majority of people, the majority of people that live in Vegas work in the same industries we do. They may not be comics, but they're definitely connected to the entertainment. So it's kind of a hip place to yeah. be. Yeah. You golf, Louie? I do golf. I was, that's one thing I did during the pandemic. I went to the national, do you know the national golf course there on yeah. uh, Desert Inn? Yeah. Wow. It's the one they had the, uh, that were, was in the film uh, Casino oh. where they land on the golf course. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's right there. And oh. uh, so I played that golf course. Great course, real fun and a lot of history. And um, I enjoyed it. I shot terribly, but uh, another thing, uh, even bad golf is, is enjoyable. Uh, I golf once, man. I almost killed about six people. I was, I was like <laughs> going the wrong way. And the guy goes, you what's your hand? It, it, it didn't make you happy. No, I didn't know what I was doing. Ron White, yeah. he was trying to teach me. And he goes, what's your handicap? And I'm like, I don't know, like math and science. <laughs> and he's like, he goes, get back on the bus. <laughs> so, but I think it's a, I think it's a sport. If you move here, I think you got to learn how to play golf a little. Really? You don't yeah. Have to be great at it. But wow, it's a great way to get away for five or six hours and uh, not have to deal with anything. Some guy told me he never swore as much in his life till he took up golf and like he swore <laughs> more. Than, is that, is that true? <laughs> I think a lot of people take it too serious. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I just, you know, I, I don't take it serious, but I, it's amazing how when you do hit a really good shot, how great it makes you feel. Yeah, I know like Kathleen Madigan and Ron White, like they have like a couple sets of uh, golf clubs with them at all the time. And they're always trying to golf, you know, whatever city they're in. And like, yeah, I don't know. I it's talked tough. to Kathleen yesterday. Oh, did you? Yeah, she called me. It was very sweet. We had a really nice talk. She's good people. Me and Kathleen started out together at the same time, like in 88. Yeah. Yeah, she was in, from St. Louis. I was from Chicago. We started working the funny bones together. And Oh, yeah. Yeah, God bless her. She had good success, you know. Great comic. Great comic. Yeah, good writer. She writes a lot, you know. Yeah, yeah. Irritatingly so. She writes more than I do. <laughs> yeah, I know. Don't you hate it when people are working harder <laughs> yeah. than you? yeah. <laughs> Or are they, are they rich enough to have writers? Like they hire like six, eight guys to write for them. I'm like, that'd be nice, you know. Hey, Rocky, what's the uh, what's the biggest difference, not counting the pandemic, that you see in young comics that you will, that's different than when we were starting out? What's the difference? Do you see the same, really the same thing, or is it is it completely different? Yeah, you, you know, you know what I see, Lou, like. Uh... I remember when I was coming up, like when some of the older guys were trying to teach us stuff, I would listen. I would take their advice. Uh, but a lot of the young guys today, they don't, they're kind of like, like, I got this pops. Like, don't, you know, like they don't seem like they're open to advice and they're, they're really dirty. And I'm, I try to tell them like, uh, you know, the best way to get out of clubs and get some exposure and get on TV is you have to have like a, a little bit of a clean act, you know, but I don't know. Like a lot of them don't seem like they take that advice. You know, the guys, well, I work always, you know, I, that's the reason I always, I mean, two reasons having a clean act was really fit me better. You know, it fit me as a person yeah. better. And secondly, I knew I could make more money corporates and all corporates. that kind of having a clean act. Yeah. And so that's the reason I did it, but I could be, you know, dirty on stage if I, I wanted to. But um, I enjoy what I do. I love the fact that you might bring your parents to my show or your grandparents. I love that idea of a whole family, generations yeah. being at the, at the show. Somebody wrote me an email the other day and said, I grew up on your comedy. Will you do a cameo to my father and mother who raised oh me God. on your things and throw in? And then they would mention one of the lines they wanted me to throw in. But it was just oh, so sweet. It was yeah. just so sweet. And I go, yeah, that's exactly why I did it. So yep. that people, because I had unhappy family in a large degree. 
with my dad and the way he was. Yeah. But I, so I wanted to do stuff that people could really enjoy together. Um, yeah. And so it worked out for me. I've had a, a really lucky and enjoyable career. You sure have, buddy. And people are still enjoying it. You make a lot of people happy, Louie. I hope so. Likewise, Rocky. Well, thank you, sir. I'm glad you're doing this podcast. Yeah, me too, man. It's It's been... I think uh, it's important. Yeah, you're right. And it's it's kind of like therapy for me. You know, it's good to talk to other comics and just, you know, get out what you're feeling. And, you know, it's a crazy time for everybody. And I think we we still we can make them laugh this way until we could all see each other again. Right. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Well, let me know I about Vegas, Louie. Let me know. I'd love to see you next week, you know, or the yeah, week after. Just, just text me. OK. And, um, you know, keep doing the podcast and, uh, you know, I'm excited. Are you doing two shows a night? Do they do two shows every night? No, they're just doing one a night at eight o'clock. I like that. That's nice. Oh, you know? I like that much better. Nah, yeah, no hard work. I don't want like, to do 14 or 15 shows a week. I don't know. That's what the trap is doing, right? They, they yeah. do two nights. I that's, think it's good with the trap. I think they like, I mean, I think it's good for a lot of comics who want to sell merch. Yeah. But because that's a, a lot of people, a lot of young, these young people could teach us stuff about merch. Yeah. They are, they are deep into the merch. Yep. And you know, it's a different generation. People want a souvenir from the celebrity. Yeah. When we were growing up, you know, I still have shirts I made 30 years ago in the basement. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. I mean, you know, you never, people always go, make a shirt like that. You'll sell them all. No, you won't. You yeah. won't sell them all. Yeah. You don't but, feel like lugging them around the country. You get tired of lugging them around. You yeah. remember we used to do three shows a night at the Riviera, seven nights a week? They did 21 yeah. shows a week there. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. That was brutal. I only did it once. So that's oh. how much I wanted to do it. Yeah. I always was lucky. I did 11 years at Bally's. Nice. So that nice. was great. And that was a great showroom. I had so much fun. And, um, you know, I, 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 like I say, the MGM has been very good to me over the years. I did, uh, six years with, uh, spy entertainment over at, uh, the, uh, you're at the Excalibur, right? Excalibur. Mm. Yeah. And the old catch a rising star room. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and then I did uh, three years at the Palace Station. They built me a little showroom. And then I did a year at the uh, Plaza downtown. It was a beautiful showroom. Have you ever seen that showroom? No. That's a beautiful showroom. 400 seats, all red, all chandeliers, wow. right, out of the, right out of the 50s. Really great. You sound like a convict, Louis. I did two years in this joint and yeah, I did a year over right. here. <laughs> I'll tell you, some of those nights in those hotels, it was like I was I was working off some community <laughs> service at the very least. Yeah. Well, good. I'm glad you're out. You got an ankle bracelet now? You got to wear I one got, of those ankles? Well, my ankles are too fat, so I have it on my finger. So. <laughs> it's a ring. <laughs> oh, good, buddy. Well, Louis, listen to me, man. It's been a pleasure and uh, a total joy that uh, you were able to do my show. I mean, it means a lot to me. And uh, uh, thank you, man. And uh, I'll get some of those things from Steph and bring them out to you if you want. Oh, that's so sweet. I'd you want me to do to that? See ya. I'd love to see you. Okay. And then I'll see you. And then if you want us to, we could do your podcast in a week or so. That'd be like, great. That'd okay. Be fun. All right, Rob. All right, Louis. I love you, buddy. Safe travel. Thank you, sir. Be try good. To sit, try to try to get, you know what I always say, when you make your flight, have you already made your flight? Yeah. Oh, always look for the biggest plane. Ah, okay. Because not a lot of people are flying. Yeah, yeah. I think Southwest is still living, leaving the middle seats open, though, you know? Well, if they are, that's the best. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Stay safe. Stay safe, okay? Okay, Louie. I love All you, right, buddy. Love you too, Rocky. Be good. Thank you. you Bye. I can't Bye. guarantee anything. Bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 That was fun. Yes, sir. Rocky, thank you so much. I love you. I love you, Louie. Thank you. All right. Be talk good. to you. I'll talk to you when you get out here. Sounds good, buddy. All right. Bye. 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 Folks, huh? That was a legend. I love Louie. He's just. 
he's been great to me like my whole career i met him and no one ever got nothing bad to say about the guy like he's just one of those guys that uh everybody loves you know everybody loves somebody what am i singing for all the time anyway uh here oh well i always gotta end with the joke of the week Here's a joke of the week. This is a regular joke joke I heard on the street. Uh, this guy, he goes, uh, he goes, hey, he goes, what's the fastest way to get across town? He goes, ah, it depends. He goes, are you walking or are you driving? He goes, I'm driving. And he goes, that's the fastest way. All right, folks, listen, um, I have a lot of hope for this new year for 2021. And I think uh, we're going to be good and we're going to turn the corner and things are going to slowly get back to normal. So thank you for joining me. And uh, I love you all very much. And uh, I wanted to say thank you. I got some new supporters, some new people logged on and joined. And please tell your friends, you know, follow us uh, at Rocky Laporte, Patreon.com. And I appreciate it very, very much. All right, you guys. Happy New Year. Bye.